Hey folks, Slice Em here with Slice Em Gaming, SGA1, GGIR, Season 46, War 2. Uh, I got a good bit of fights in this war, which is really exciting. I always enjoy taking more fights. First fight though, Titaniana, yeah, versus Kindred. Um, so as you can see, we've got a couple different things going on. Combat Deja Vu, so you got to watch out, dude, the prowess. Um, you know, at the end of the day though, this is a, a, a fairly basic fight. Now the problem is, even though it is basic... <laughs> I'm still used, I'm still learning this champ, so I still make a lot of mistakes with this champ. I'm not great with the rotation or, or knowing exactly what to do at all times, which makes me have to think, which can cause deaths. But so far, that's not been the case. Um, she's pretty simple to use, which is a great thing. So it, it works out for me. But uh, as you can see here, pretty easy going fight. Instead of punishing the L1 like you see a lot of people do, I am simply thinking to myself, deck, stay away, don't get clipped by this thing. Uh, obviously, the prowess adds up, um, so I, I just wanted, wanted to be safe more than anything here. So th this fight is a little bit longer than I'd like, uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's all under control for me, which gives me a, a, a sense of accomplishment. Uh, war is a lot of control in, on my side of it. I'm more concerned about what I'm going to do to control the war fight so I don't have to worry about things going sideways. Uh, as you can see, I've got the degen on me, so just trying to stay away, letting that fall off as much as possible without taking a large amount of damage. So, and again, here we are just kind of staying back. Things have fallen off, and at this point, oh, nope, we're going to go ahead and get, get clipped, eat a combo. Um, and now I, I said to myself, okay, we know what we got to do. Um, I do, we, we key the heavy first, kind of mess up here, but that's okay. L3 has started, and my biggest concern is, is I've got him too close to the L3. So I had to stop, and I had to take and push the L2. And again, not risking anything. I wanted to stay back, making sure that I'm safe. Uh, and again, Degen kicking in, and you can see it's starting to hurt a little bit here. Uh, so I, I'm trying to finish the fight, but at the same time, not wanting to get back too deep into a corner, and also having to watch the D Degen. So... Um, it was, it was not a fun spot to be in. And again, not being great with, with the champ, I was kind of like, ugh. At this point, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're in a good spot. Uh, D-Gen was ticking, but at the end of the day, we're in, we're in control. Here comes the root, throw the special. And as you can see, the D-Gen is chewing through me. Um, but, I, and at first there, I backed away. I, I started to back away, going to let it drop. He's at 1%. I was a little worried about going in or doing anything stupid, something crazy happened. I was going to let the DJ drop off because it was ticking pretty hard. So, But instead, rushed in and finished it. I got Onslaught, Kingpin, Node 15. Again, this is a, a prowess node. Critical setup means I'm going to have some guaranteed crits. Um, but at the end of the day, this is, this is to me, a fairly easy fight, a uh, fairly easy node. Nothing really crazy here. Uh, as you can see, I, I was recording from one fight to the next. I try to always break my fights up in my in my deal. So, and for this fight, the biggest thing that I really like is how Kingpin plays uh, to onslaught. So onslaught benefits from being able to land a heavy um, without having to parry first. So if they're not if they're not um, stunned, you get a long a longer pause on your debuffs. As you can see up there in the top right, there's a big pause button that's in purple, um, and that's for 10 seconds if you can can land the heavy without having to stun the opponent. So uh, for me, the big thing is, is his heavy, easily punished by the heavy. I managed to get clipped here. Does a decent amount of damage. Made me sweat for a hot second. Cancel that into my L2, uh, which also ramps up damage. And again, as you can see, pauses all the debuffs. So we're, we're in a good spot, baiting the L1, right back to the heavy keeping our debuffs paused. So as you can see, it's just slowly ticking away on him. And then we're gonna go to the L1 and we're gonna finish him off, so. Um, onslaught versus Kingpin. Kingpin really playing to Onslaught's uh, strengths, which was great for me there. Um, other than getting clipped, you know, I, I felt very comfortable with that fight. And as you can see, I didn't even burn an invuln to start with, which normally I do. If, if I have any doubt whatsoever, I, I always burn, burn an invuln. And as you can see here, that's exactly what we're doing. We're throwing an invuln boost on uh, Iron Man just to be safe. Um, unblockable, make a stand, which the great news is Iron Man blocks unblockable mutants. So, again, it's not something I'm overly worried about. But uh, 
first time really, really using Iron Man since the update, so I haven't played with him a whole lot. So I, I wasn't 100% sure on what I was going to do. Um, so I, I just was kind of like, okay, let's just let's be super safe. And of course, that's what we're going to do. Um, from all my times ever streaming, when we would look at war videos, I've always said, block anything you can. You can always use heal potions. The revives is what, what hurt. You know, the, the death is what matters. So on this rotation, I'm looking to go L2 to L1s. Uh, and you're going to see I make mistakes in this fight. Uh, and when I say make mistakes, I, I try to land a parry. I miss a couple parries. Uh, I look to go from an L2 to L1s and instead accidentally push myself over to an extra L2 here in a minute. Um, so that's that's all getting ready to happen. Um, but this was a long fight. Uh, another, I say long, longer than I really wanted it to be. Um, but all in all, again, it's fairly controlled. I'm minimizing the damage coming in. And even though I'm used to dexing those... Uh, there's no re there's no reason uh, I gained nothing and as you can see there's that second L2 I really wanted to be an L1 wasn't able to parry in heavy before that to drop the, the protection so instead it was just kind of a mediocre <laughs> special just to drop the protection really more than anything and I probably should have heavy coming out of that special but instead uh, we accidentally push it over that's okay and again there I am Trying to get an L1, instead I get an L2. So this is two L2s that I've, I've accidentally pushed that I meant to throw L1s on, which definitely caused this fight to go a lot longer than I really wanted. Um, here in a second, I'll, I'll be able to toss the L1. I've been waiting to toss the entire war. Uh, and even though I've had zero luck, I get frustrated. I've had zero luck putting him on his butt off of parries to drop the protection, so... I threw the L1 anyway, and we're going to go ahead and do it last one coming up after he throws this. And this this is going to be the end of this fight, so uh, no doubt about it. Taking him down right to the end and said, here, eat this L1 just for good measures. Uh, because I've been terrible about tossing them all fight long. But uh, as you can see, fairly clean fight. Uh, got out of there with pretty well all my health and felt good about it. Fourth fight here, I've got Onslaught. I've got... Uh, I just call her Chi because I'm not going to say that right. Note 34. Um, so the big thing is, is I got to be careful with when she cleanses. She She's going to gain a lot of power the more she cleanses. So staying too close to her, she's going to eat the fear debuff um, that gets put on her. I say fear. I can't even remember technically what it is. but um, So she's, she's going to eat that debuff that's put on her from the note itself. Um, so I got to be careful. I don't want to stay too close. And as you can see early on here, I do a pretty good job of keeping distance. Neuroshock is passive, so she's not cleansing that. I don't have to worry about it. Um, but as you can see right there, node activates. She's going to cleanse it. And as this goes, she's going to end up picking up. Um, she's going to end up picking up combat power. So that means she's going to be able to fill up power a whole lot faster than I really wanted. Now, in my time dueling her coming into this match, um, I really was trying to figure out what was going to be my best tactic. And I think I probably could have played this differently a, a couple different ways. But at the end of the day, um, I ended up going for an L3. Uh, it puts a lot of Neuroshock on her, and that's going to be just a lot of ticking damage. And my hope was that if I had the fight in great control, uh, I could always bait, go to a heavy, and then follow it up um, and stay on top of it. Because the heavy would just extend those Neuroshocks. It would allow me to really tick through a lot of damage, but... Uh, the problem with using the L1 and the L2 is they're going to give her something to cleanse. Uh, so in return, it's just going to make her unblockable because, again, once she gets so many counters, she becomes unblockable. Uh, now, the upside is, is Onslaught will block unblockable skill champion specials. So I wasn't too worried about the specials, but I was worried about maybe getting cornered or just something really going bad and having no way to stop the situation. So as you can see here, we're going to the L3. Puts a stun on her. Uh, didn't push it back to the middle, which I, I didn't really expect. I was actually kind of caught off guard by that. But as you can see, we've got 26, I think, narrow shocks on it right now. Um, so, <clears throat> and, and as you can see, they're they're ticking. There it is. I kind of make a mistake. She, she punishes me for it. I'm able to go ahead and throw an L1 just to take and put some more damage back on her. I'm back towards the corner, but baiting the L1, not a big deal. As you can see, her power definitely gaining quick. So this is where I had to make a decision. 
And my thought is, okay, we're going for the kill. We're gonna try to get the kill quickly here. She baits the heavy and we're gonna push and finish. So, which was great news. So another fairly good clean victory uh, as we were able to control the fight and keep things basically under control. All right, so next fight, I've got OG Iron Man, Bishop, Note 39, Prowess build up. So Power Snack, that's the other big thing here. So the big thing is he's gonna eat some of my armor. So I do gotta watch his uh, power again. Again, the theme of this, this war for me has been control. Um, controlling what, what I can, making sure I keep myself in spots to be, um, you know, in, in a good spot and, and not stuck. Uh, as you can see, I go ahead and put on some uh, additional power here for the uh, special. Not so worried about the power return because, again, this the, the rotation is going to go L2, L1, L1, L1. And uh, hopefully I can do it better than I did against uh, Apocalypse. Reviewing the nodes one more time for myself, prepare myself, make sure I'm recording, get things right in my mind and say, okay, let's do this. So here we go, coming into the fight, and let's get rolling. So right out the gate, parry, we're going to get things going. Nothing big, and again, my biggest thing is making sure I watch his power. I don't want to accidentally push the, the special three. Uh, special one, not a big deal, OG Iron Man being uh, incinerate immune, so not concerned about what that's going to bring to the table the other thing is the power sting so it i did kind of forget about it at one point in the fight uh the rest of the fight i was able to be okay here so steady release coming back in there's power sting power sting back up again and just waiting on power sting to drop so i can look at launching my special two all right special two goes and go it Go ahead and get clipped. There's where I forgot power stick. <laughs> did it myself a little bit of damage, but at the end of the day, still under control. And again, good solid hits. And as you see, 28K on that medium. So this fight, again, has been fairly in my favor. There's There's been nothing crazy and, and able to just really melt him back to the L1. Really, we've 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 entered touchdown mode here. It's he's done. Yeah. So there we go. Again, a fight that was really all about control. Never really any danger. The biggest thing in that fight was really controlling power for me, which I felt like I was capable of doing. So next matchup, I got long shot on node 45, which is hazard shift, shock and bleed, conflictor. So I do got to be careful. I do come into this fight with a white mags pre-fight on long shot, which is great. Um, we're using Onslaught. So again, Onslaught, 150% uh, reduction basically on the uh, bleed and the uh, shock. So we're, we're in a position where we don't have to worry about much on side the, on, on the node. So, And on top of it, the one big thing that, that really benefits Onslaught is when he has a shock on him, he has a, I forget what it is, it's a certain percent chance every so often to throw a neuro shock on the opponent. Uh, as you can see, get clipped by the L1. Great job, um, you know. And again, the bleeds, they're not mattering. Matter of fact, it's doing me a great job of being able to just heal up. Uh, went to, to land my heavy off of his heavy and did not create enough space. Uh, so, so far, we're 0 for 2 on, on things that shouldn't have been a problem. So we do have to be mindful of the power gain. As you can see, he's, he's grabbing some power, so I push him to the L2. And I'm not gonna lie, in this moment, I was a little concerned. Um, I was worried about him gaining power one more time or having anything go wrong and him being able to race to a special three. Um, luckily, that didn't matter. And again, incinerate doesn't matter. Bleed doesn't matter. Shock doesn't matter. So in every way possible, Onslaught has been perfect for this fight. Um, I got to give it up to our planners. Well thought out, well planned. Um, this, this is a fight that basically I can control even though I mess up a couple different times. Uh, onslaught's beefy, he's tanky, he takes the hits, it doesn't matter. Um, really, again, for me, this is making sure that I don't do anything stupid and push the L3, more than anything, right? So as you can see, we're on the L2, and again, I'm, I'm just like, okay, let's just let's just bait. Let's just bait. That's all that matters. Uh, we'll, we'll take the block damage, doesn't really matter. Get a little concerned here, because I do a good job of getting pushed back in the corner, so I'm forced to throw my L1. Uh, and again, he's back up to two bars of power, so not ideal. And this one made me nervous. Soaking L2. <laughs> so 
So we've soaked an L3, we've soaked a or an L1, we've soaked an L2, and we've soaked a heavy. Uh, and as you can see, the debuffs are just, they're, they're overcoming long shot in the moment we knew we had the match. And uh, again, it was a fairly good control fight. I played like absolute dog through the fight. Terribly played, still get the win. Deathless for the match, and more importantly, as a team, we get the victory, as you can see here. Uh, gave up a couple more deaths than we would really like. I felt like we got a little sloppy at the end. Um, but I think as the season goes, we'll see our numbers continue to drop. Um, some deaths we probably shouldn't have had. So that does make us 2-0 to start the season. So with that being said, uh, it's a great start. We're, we're happy where we're at, and it looks like it's going to keep going. So keep tuning in. Remember, new videos dropping every time after war. I'm going to try to get them out as quickly as possible. But till then, take care, have fun, and as always, keep on gaming. Adios.